AP Biology, Chapter 47, Animal Development. Today we're going to learn about how animals develop from the single-celled zygote they started off as until they reach the multicellular animal they will become. So the most complex problem in biology is going from that single-celled zygote to a complete trillion-plus cell organism that has the same DNA as the original cell, but has highly specialized functions. There's over 100 different types of cells in your body, and they make up the four different types of tissues, epithelial, nervous, and connective tissue. And then those tissues make up the organs, which in turn make up the organ systems, which in turn make up the organism. And all of them have to be coordinated and working together, and uh, that requires a lot of chemistry. All right, so we're going to start off with some things that go on at the cellular level. Now, remember cell division uh, for that zygote it's called mitosis. We're talking somatic cells, body cells. Uh, and these cells uh, will specialize. We don't just do mitosis over and over again and just have identical cells with no differences. All your cells are identical, but there's definitely differences. The process of becoming specialized, become the hundreds or so different cells you have in your body, is called differentiation, and you should be familiar with this word. Differentiation is cell specialization. Your cells all start out as a general cell called a stem cell, and then they specialize or differentiate into things like nerve cells, muscle cells, um, bone cells, osteocytes, things like that. Now, the reason why they can do that is because you can shut off some genes for um, some proteins that will turn the cell into uh, whatever cell it could become but isn't. For example, finger, your cells have the same DNA as the cells in your liver. However, in your finger cells, you are turning on the genes for things like sweat and oil and other things that the cells need for skin and turning off the genes for things like bile and the other things that uh, would be produced by the liver cells. However, the genes for making bile are in your finger cells. They're just turned off. Likewise, you have the cells in your liver that have the genes for making bile, and those are turned on. But the genes for making like sweat and oil and things like that in your skin are turned off in your liver. But those genes are still there. Morphogenesis. Morpho means to uh, change, like the mighty Morphin Powder Power Rangers, they can change. Genesis means to create. So we're talking about creation of form, and this gives the organism its shape. We have a couple different things that are involved with the basic body plan of animals. We have polarity, one end is different from the other. We have a head area that's different from our posterior end. Uh, end. The symmetry, that's uh, sim means same. The left and right side of our bodies are mirror images of each other. Most animals have bilateral symmetry. And then asymmetry, we have some places where we don't have any symmetry at all. For example, your hand, the left side of the hand is not the mirror image of the right hand side of the hand. So these are some of the stages of development step by step. The first step, of course, is gamete formation. After meiosis and gamete formation, we have fertilization. The fertilized zygote will undergo mitosis, and that cell division, uh, the, the two cells are still connected and they form like a little furrow made out of uh, actin and eventually uh, that's called cleavage. And then we have this little pouch that forms called gastrulation that will eventually form our digestive systems. Now we're starting to change things around a little bit and create some of the forms that we uh, will eventually develop into the major body systems in the adult. We also then have uh, organ formation that we're not going to go into a lot of details on. Um, and then after that we have growth and tissue formation and again, we have more differentiation with organs and growth and tissue formation, specialization of the cells to do different functions. All right, these are some model organisms, mustard plants, uh, Wisconsin fast plants, mice, always uh, nice to use because they have a fairly uh, quick breeding time, so we can get lots of generations out of them. They also have a lot of the same genes as humans have, so uh, they make good specimens. Drosophila, they have even faster uh, um, breeding times, good for genetics. Fertilization, joining of egg nucleus and sperm nucleus. How does the sperm get through the egg membrane? And how do you protect the uh, uh, egg from multiple uh, sperm fertilizing it? And then how is the rest of development triggered? So let's go into that now. All right, fertilization, sperm joining the egg. Only the sperm nucleus uh, enters the egg cells in sea urchins. Uh, you don't have to know that. However, you should know that the whole sperm enters the egg cell in mammals. So we're actually going to have the whole cell, uh, sperm cell physically enter. 
Now, uh, there's a couple of steps here. And uh, if you look at the tip of the sperm here, there's some digestive enzymes in this place called an acrosome. You don't have to write that down now, but you will write it down later. The acrosome has digestive enzymes, and it kind of burns a hole, or not really burned, but chemically digests the hole through the uh, cell membrane and uh, eventually allows the, um, the rest of the sperm inside. So you have this little tip called an acrosome that's going to uh, have enzymes to break through the outer barrier of the egg so that the rest of the sperm can get inside. Now, once the rest of the sperm's inside, um, the nucleus of the sperm will fuse with the nucleus of the egg. The 23 chromosomes from the sperm mix with the 23 chromosomes from the egg, and now you're at 46 chromosomes, which is a diploid cell, and that's what fertilization's all about. All right, we do need to write this down. Um, there's two ways to block multiple sperm, and multiple sperm is called polyspermy. So the first one is a fast block to polyspermy. And uh, fast block is going to be involving sodium channels. So we have these protein channels called sodium channels. And um, once those sodium channels open up as a result of the fusion of the sperm with the egg, it's going to send a bunch of sodium inside, and uh, we're going to depolarize the membrane. When the membrane depolarizes, that's going to result in an inability of any of the other sperm to chemically bind with the, uh, the egg, and that's going to be the fast block to polyspermy. So let's go ahead and write that down. Fast block, sodium channels open up, depolarizes membrane. There's another uh, block to polyspermy, and this is involving the signal transduction pathway. Signal transduction pathway, once again, is chemical signals like transcription factors triggered by other chemical signals to bind to DNA inside the nucleus that will initiate transcription, and then we make messenger RNA from that DNA, and then we do translation of that messenger RNA in the uh, cytoplasm at the ribosome, and then those proteins will have a specific effect. So we're basically turning on DNA to make proteins that will do something in a signal transduction pathway. In this case, the release of calcium from the uh, ER will cause a reaction across the egg. And after the signal transduction pathway is activated, then we uh, make something called a fertilization envelope, uh, and that's all you have to know about that. Uh, really, the big thing you have to know about this is calcium involved with the slow block to polyspermy, sodium involved with the fast block to polyspermy. Also, with the sodium, that's the one that depolarizes the membrane or makes it um, without a charge, which will not be attracted to the sperm at all. All right, here we have some more information about what happens at fertilization. The first uh, second, we have the binding of sperm to egg. And then we should write this one down, acrosomal reaction. The acrosome, and if you remember, this is the uh, very tip here. The acrosome of the sperm has digestive enzymes to break through the, the egg membrane. Let's write that down. Acrosome, hydrolytic enzymes sperm to get inside egg. All right, so we have the acrosomal reaction. Plasma membrane depolarizes. That's the fast block. And then we have uh, a lot of calcium levels going up in the, uh, the fertilized egg. And then we have the slow block, creating a fertilization envelope that will further prevent any kind of uh, sperm from getting in. If more than one sperm did get in and tried to fertilize the egg, it probably wouldn't undergo mitosis, and it would just self-basically uh, destruct. After the first uh, minute, we have the formation of the fertilization envelope complete. Nothing else is going to get inside uh, as far as sperm. Then uh, you don't have to know anything about this. Really just the fast and slow block are the important things here. Uh, we have more protein synthesis about five minutes in. And then the egg and sperm nuclei fusion is complete after about 20 minutes. So we have a, a true diploid nucleus now with 46 chromosomes. Then at about 40 minutes, we have DNA, more DNA synthesis. And uh, the first cell division occurs at uh, 90 minutes in. So if you remember the cell cycle, we have like G1, S, G2, then mitosis. Uh, we actually enter that mitotic phase and then cytokinesis after about 90 minutes.
All right, here's the fast block to polyspermy. Release of sodium causes depolarization. So this will, uh, first of all, the acrosome digests the hole through it, but this uh, also releases or triggers this sodium channels, and these all are sodium channels opening up. And as they open up, sodium can get inside, and it creates a, uh, a depolarized membrane, and then it just kind of spreads like a wave until the entire membrane is depolarized and other sperm can't get in. All right, cleavage. Cleavage is the start of multicellularity, so we're talking about two cells kind of sticking to each other. Repeated mitotic divisions of the zygote, and they are uh, all going to be in a, kind of like a clump of cells. Now, as uh, the cell division occurs, we're just having a ball of cells here. There's really no up or down or anything else like this. But uh, eventually, we start forming something called a vegetal pole and an animal pole. And the animal pole, and this is just kind of orientation. Remember, we're talking about anterior from posterior and things like that. So these are establishing some of the uh, uh, templates that be built upon later in development. All right, now this is something you definitely have to know. The egg gets fertilized, becomes a zygote, and then a ball of cells is called a marula. That's important. Ball of cells. These are called marulas. Now we're going to have a couple more stages coming up, but this is the first uh, stage after forming a zygote. All right, the next stage is something called a blastula. And the marula was a ball of cells. The blastula is still a ball of cells, but a blastula has a blastocele inside. Now that's one easy, kind of easy to remember. If you remember, a coelom is a body cavity. So this is where the coelom is going to form. And this is called a blastocele, or a fluid-filled uh, space inside that becomes the, the coelom. So the next stage is forming a blastula, which has a fluid-filled space inside called a blastocele. And that's all you have to know about that. All right, so we have zygote, marula, blastula, blastula. Now here's something that uh, is kind of like a side uh, uh, piece of knowledge. Uh, let's go and write this down. There's something called a gray crescent, and um, this gray crescent located over here is in between the animal pole and the vegetable pole, or vegetal pole. And uh, this will establish the anterior-posterior body axis in amphibians. So this is going to establish the head and rear areas of an amphibian. And if you mess with the gray crescent, if you uh, do like experiments on this thing and uh, the gray crescent isn't present, then they don't form things like heads and, uh, or they form them in the wrong places. So these are kind of important for determining what's going to be the head and what's uh, going to be the opposite of the head. Now in mammals, the polarity may be established by the entry of the sperm into the egg, so that's a little bit different. But uh, you should be familiar with gray crescent, amphibians, head from posterior. Here we have uh, some experiments they did with uh, the gray crescent. Uh, cytoplasmic determinants are chemicals within the, uh, um, the cell that will determine what develops into what. Um, this is one thing that I do want to point out, though. See the gray crescent on this side, and then we have a head posterior kind of uh, forming. But the other uh, cell doesn't have the gray crescent, and when they split these cells in half, it doesn't form a head or tail. So the gray crescent was determined to be pretty important for head-tail development in amphibians. This one, we have both the gray crescents in both uh, cells, and then when they separate those cells to let it become its own identical twin, they still uh, form their heads correctly because they got the gray crescent. All right, so now the next step, we have marula, we have blastula, and now we have gastrula. So go ahead and write that into gastrula, and uh, that's going to be the next step in development. The gastrula is going to form your uh, gast refers to digestive system, and uh, this is the formation of the tube that will eventually become your digest digestive system. Now, worms, of course, have a very simple tube, but we basically have a tube for our digestive system. The esophagus, stomach, small and large intestine are all just basically modified uh, tube sections. So, the gastrula is when we have this little pouch forming that will eventually be the mouth or anus, depending on what kind of uh, animal you are. And that's what a gastrula is. All right, here we have uh, some of the um, cell layers forming, and we'll talk about those a little bit later. Endo means inside. Derm refers to um, tissue or uh, even skin in some cases. Endoderm, inside layer. Meso means middle, so mesoderm is the middle layer. And ecto means outside. Ectoderm is the 
outer layer. And we're going to talk about what each one of those layers become, but let's start with uh, this uh, gastrula. So we have gastrulation occurring, which is just basically this pouch, and this will eventually form our, our intestines and mouth and all the other digestive stuff other than our liver and, uh, and pancreas. All right, so if you remember, we're going to come back to this, but uh, protostomes form their mouth first in the gastrula stage, and that's uh, going to be almost all invertebrates or animals without a backbone. Remember that includes things like the uh, nematodes and the um, annelids. It also includes mollusks and arthropods. Deuterostomes form their uh, anus first. So this little part here becomes the anus in vertebrates like us. Uh, vertebrates also include fish, amphibians, reptiles, and birds. The only non-vertebrate uh, animal that uh, forms their anus first are the echinoderms, and um, they, they also have that similarity to us. So let's review. Gastrula is a uh, more complicated ball of cells. We have the blastocele here that forms the coelom, and then we start forming our digestive system from these, uh, this little pouch resulting from gastrulation. All right, now you do need to know this as well. So we have three different germ layers, and germ just refers to uh, embryonic layers or uh, stem cells that can become other cells eventually. They don't refer to disease at all, so don't uh, be confused with that. Sometimes you can buy wheat germ. It doesn't mean it's full of bacteria. It means it's a very young stage for that wheat. All right, so ectoderm, the big thing I want you to know about the ectoderm uh, or the outer layer of cells is that will form your epidermis and your nervous system. Make sure you know that. Your epidermis and your nervous system, including things like your brain and spinal cord. So that's where it comes from, that outer layer of cells. The endoderm, or the internal lining, forms things like your digestive and respiratory tract, as well as your reproductive system. So make sure that you know that about the endoderm, digestive tract, and respiratory system. Now you can try to memorize everything else here, but make sure you absolutely know those first two, digestion, respiration for inner lining of cells. And this is the endoderm right there that forms the digestive system and things like lungs. Ectoderm forms your brain as well as your skin. And then we have mesoderm. The mesoderm forms your skeleton and muscles as well as your circulatory system. And you should know that as well. Mesoderm, middle, muscle, blood, bone, skeleton. All right, go ahead and review the three uh, germ layers and what they'll eventually uh, differentiate or specialize to become. We're going to skip the dorsal lip here. All right, morphogenesis, organization of differentiated cells into tissues or organs. So all we're doing is uh, changing in shape. We're having cells kind of fold inward and in different ways that are going to uh, result in some of these uh, uh, organs they will eventually become and body parts they become. And they're guided by chemical uh, gradients or concentration gradients of different things like cytoplasmic determinants. And uh, also based on their connection to other cells, certain DNA sequences will be turned on and trigger these cells to become uh, all the different things that they uh, will be in the adult organism. And that's really all you have to know about that. Embryology gets fairly complicated. Here we have some cytoplasmic determinants, and these will be involved with uh, uh, just the concentration gradient of these cytoplasmic determinants will determine things like, uh, you know, mesoderm, endoderm, things like that. Here's gastrulation. Remember, that's in the gastrula, and this will form the mouth in protostomes and the anus in deuterostomes like us. Pseudopods are just extensions of the cytoplasm to kind of move around. All right, organ development. The neural tube, and this is something you have to know, neural refers to neurons. Neural tube forms the brain and spinal cord, so you should uh, write that one down. This will be where the, those two uh, organs come from. The notochord uh, replaces the vertebra and spinal cord column. I'm not going to test you on that. You could write that one down. Definitely know the neural tube. Uh, so notochord is like a primitive skeleton then replaced by a real skeleton later on. Uh, and somites are bands of tissues that become muscle and bone. Of all three of these, make sure you know neural tube, 
If you're looking for his vibe on the AP exam, no note of cord and some mites. All right, coelom, here we have uh, the body cavity. Now, in us uh, coelomates, or animals of the body cavity, remember that's that space inside that your organs are being held in. The uh, uh, digestive system, the heart, all that stuff's held in that space called the coelom. Now, in coelomates, like us and uh, uh, most animals, actually, things like arthropods and mollusks and echinoderms, they all have a body cavity derived from the middle layer called the mesoderm. Now, there is one animal, the uh, nematodes, that have a body cavity not derived from mesoderm, so we call that a pseudocoelomate. Pseudo means false, so pseudocoelomate means a false coelom, which doesn't mean they don't have a body cavity. They do have a body cavity. They just don't have it derived from mesoderm. So that's the definition of a coelom, a body cavity derived from mesoderm. Pseudocoelomates, like nematodes, don't have that. There are only a few animals on this planet that are acoelomates as far as phyla, and that includes things like the platyhelminthes. And acoelomates means that they're pretty much pure meat, and there's no body cavity for holding organs. All right, review the uh, coelom and where they form. Mesoderm, except in nematodes, pseudocoelom, between the mesoderm and endoderm. Acoelomates, no coelom, like platyhelminthes, flatworms, no body cavity. And here we have a review of that. Acoelomates, see it's like pure meat. That's a planaria. You can cut its head and it grows two heads. Pseudocoelomates, like uh, the nematodes, they have a false body cavity. And then we have coelomates, like pretty much everything else, that have a body cavity derived from mesoderm. Here we have the coelomate phyla. Go ahead and review these. All right, now we talked about that uh, that neural tube, and uh, let's talk a little bit more about that. If you take a look here, neural tube, and just a quick uh, review. Here's the neural plate, and it just kind of folds. Remember, this is ectoderm, and eventually completely folds, and this will eventually form uh, your spinal cord and your brain. So that's where it comes from. It came from the neural tube. Here we have neural tube development right over here, and this is the area that will start to infold and become those uh, specialized organs. Apoptosis, uh, programmed cell death. Remember that you had skin between your uh, fingers, so those cells had to die, and that's called apoptosis. So that's one way we can, we can uh, sculpture some of the body parts. Stem cells can become any kind of cells. So here we have the stem cells of the different germ layers. And then when they specialize, they become liver cells, nerve cells, heart cells, things like that. One of the hopes that we have in medicine is to uh, make stem cells become these t different types of specialized cells to repair people with like spinal cord damage. Homeotic genes are master regulatory genes that turn on other genes and they have a fairly large uh, role in uh, when genes are turned on and what organs come from those uh, genes. Let's go and write down what homeotic genes are. They're master regulatory genes that regulate other genes to turn on. And if you have the homeotic genes in the wrong place, you'll develop things in the wrong place. For example, a deliberate mutation to flies to put the homeotic genes in the, the head or turn it on the head has them growing, growing legs out of their head. So you can see these are fairly important genes as far as uh, where things are developed uh, in the animal. All right, read through this. All right, this ends your notes on chapter 47, Animal Development.